Good afternoon. Thanks all for joining Computer Vision uh, Session 1 in AI Week uh, 2022. My name is Yorai. I'll be moderating the first session of Computer Vision in this uh, conference. And then I wish you all fruitful and li fruitful listening and a great session. Today, we are going to see and hear some uh, uh, discussions and talks about all kinds of perspective of computer vision involved with observation. The first one will take care and demonstrate us uh, ways to uh, understand scenes and to use a uh, directed goal uh, when doing it, followed by multi-scene camera position and orientation using transformers, and then uh, a real life uh, research about autism spectrum disorder using uh, uh, computer vision. And we're gonna finalize it with a, a correction filter uh, for uh, inverse problems to solve them uh, in case of uh, uh, observation models. So uh, I'm running forward and I'm, I'm very pleased to introduce the first uh, speaker, Professor Shimon Ullman uh, from uh, the Weizmann uh, Institute of Science. Uh, uh, it was, he is the head of the AI uh, Center, Institute of AI Center, and uh, professor at the brain he was professor at the Brain Cognitive Science and AI Laboratory at MIT. Uh, his research combines uh, computer and human vision, human cognition, and brain modeling. Obtained his uh, previous uh, BSc mathematics, physics, biology, and the Hebrew uh, University and PhD Electrical Engineering Computer Science at the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in Massachusetts in MIT. Uh, professor, the stage is yours. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uri, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, start the uh, sharing, share the screen and uh, start the presentation. Okay, so the title of the presentation is Goal-Directed Scene Understanding. Uh, and scene understanding is what we do here. We look at an image and we can recognize what's going on. And it's not just recognizing uh, the different objects in the scene. Uh, we get from it a full meaning, a full story of what's going on here. And this is something that we do very naturally, we as people, but in the uh, area of computer vision uh, <clears throat> and AI, we are still very far from understanding scenes like that and getting the meaning out of them. And we'll see as we go along why it's so, di so difficult, where we are and what I propose for going forward. Um, as you can see, some of the difficulties are that Scenes have complex meanings. It's more than just labels. Uh, we usually focus on some parts of the scene, which are the important ones, and ignore others. And at the same time, we can be highly, select, highly selective for some fine details when they, are, when they become important. And during the process, we combine vision continuously uh, with non-visual knowledge uh, that we have about the world. Uh, here's an example of attention to small details that may be crucial uh, for meaning of, for the meaning of the scene that we cannot ignore and we have to make sure that we get them right. Uh, if you look at it, is this person smoking or not? Everybody looking at the scene can know, can know the answer. And of course, to answer this correctly, to understand what's going on, we have to pay attention to a small detail here. Otherwise, the meaning, uh, the correct meaning is lost. Now, the state of the art in getting towards scene understanding uh, is represented here by the results of a, a well-known computer system, computer vision system uh, called Mask RCNN, uh, developed uh, by various people over a long time at Facebook. And the goal is to uh, start scene analysis by recovering all the scene components. You can see a number of examples here of the output uh, of this uh, uh, of this scheme, and <clears throat> uh, you can see that it, it identified different people in general, also different objects, uh, and eventually they want to get all the parts of all the objects. 
So that's the main step forward that we do not um, just recognize a single object uh, in the scene as in uh, earlier systems, but we can look at the scene and try to identify all the components in the scene. Now, having all the components of the scene is good, but it's not enough because scene with similar components can have different meanings. For example, here, the, component, the main components are very similar. We have two boys, we have a ball, we have a fence, but the meaning what's going on is very different. On the left, uh, a scene taken from a well-known movie. There are two children that would probably like to play together, but they cannot. On the right, it's very different. They obviously can play together if they wanted to, but apparently they prefer to just sit and talk. And what we need in addition to the components is the various relationships between the, uh, uh, between the components of the scene. So scene interpretation is not just labeling objects, but it depends on the full structure, the composition of the, uh, uh, of the scene. And you can see an example here of what we want to get out of the, uh, the scene in addition to its individual components. For example, for the two boys here that are facing each other on the two sides of the, sands, of the fence and so on and so forth. So it's, we have to get all the components as we saw in the previous slide of the, uh, uh, the Facebook system but that's not enough. We need all the pro different properties and the different interrelations between uh, the important components in the scene. Uh, this is attempted in, in what we try to do in computer vision is to construct from the image something called a scene graph, which has the components and the various properties and relations. So looking at the scene uh, from in one, one of the available computer systems, you get uh, the components, but you start to get also that, for example, there is a woman uh, and the hand of the woman is holding the hand of a man who is wearing a jacket. We get more of the story uh, by getting a representation uh, in the form of a scene graph shown here. Now, scene graphs are quickly becoming very, very large when you try to look at a, uh, it's a complex scene. For example, this is a, an actual output from a scene that is trying to generate the scene graph of the uh, uh, small picture that we see here. This is uh, below <clears throat> the scene graph. And in fact, it's incomplete. There are various things we can see here which are not annotated here. So you can realize that the story goes um, uh, well beyond uh, uh, a simple labeling of objects and even uh, properties and relations, the graph becomes very, very large, even for small, for small scene, scenes. Um, and yet the attempt, the, the current attempt, the current way that we in the, com in the community try to analyze scene is to get initially all the components. And as you saw with the little details that make, uh, that, that may be crucial, we have to make sure that we do not miss any component of the scene, even small one, if at some later point, it may become important. Um, so we start uh, available systems today, the approaches today start with labeling uh, all the components at finer and finer resolution and finer and finer details. Then look at pairwise at all the possible relationships between pairs of components within the scene. So this becomes sort of N square, it becomes very large. Uh, then we identify uh, the, the relations that actually takes place in the scene. Uh, and finally, we get something like a scene graph that we see on the right. But notice this is, uh, this is a sketch, it's a very small part. You can just imagine what happens if we, like, we try to look at a real scene, like the scene, a scene like this, and assume that you start with all the components and you know, a particular door or a particular window uh, or particular traffic sign may be, may be important in the scene. So we have to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to find all the, uh, all the objects, all the parts and all the fine details and then all the relationships between them. This is getting out, out of hand. And therefore that's sort of the direction that is being followed currently, uh, starting with the full components and getting a full scene structure is impossible. Uh, and it's usually unnecessary because us usually we are not interested in all the possible relations and everything that may be going on in the scene. 
However, when we look at the scene, we can, you know, if we have a particular task in mind, there is something we want to get out of the image, we can get it. For example, if I ask you, are there at the moment any people crossing on the course, course crossing the road, you can look at it and you can answer yes or no, and you can try it and, and, and find the answer. The, the question or what we are interested in may be more complex, like uh, can we see any taxi here with an open door? Maybe somebody coming out of one of the taxis, we can do that. Uh, so although we cannot get the full interpretation of everything in the image, we can in, in a flexible way get uh, the relevant information uh, of the scene once the goal is stated to us. And therefore the approach, and now I'm going to, to our own work, um, is to go in this direction and to create a, a scheme, a computer vision theory or a scheme that can perform guided vision in which you can have an image, but unlike the current approach in which you take the image and extract all the information out by some kind of deep network, uh, I think that the way forward is to connect, to combine uh, the usual bottom-up deep network with a complementary mechanism that allows you to tell the system somehow what you are interested in getting out of this image uh, and develop a scheme that given the image and what you want to get out, the goal of the computation, it will give you what you want. So for example, if you have an image like this and you can probably see what's going on, you can get the image and, only, and also tell the system what's shown here is touching man, what the man shown here is touching. And the answer is a purse and uh, the system that we have developed and works, uh, you provide the image and the goal and the system will specifically output uh, the appropriate um, uh, answer to the goal that you provided. Similarly, who is sitting on the chair and the chair is pointed to the system, uh, the answer is a particular woman and you will get the right answer out. So the architecture of this, I will not get into any technical details, but you need a sort of a complex and a different type uh, of a network model, which uh, gets uh, the image and an instruction. This is uh, a very sketchy uh, um, way of showing it. I will not show the full detail and I will not go into the training system. Just note that this is a recurrent network and therefore there is not, uh, the training is some, somewhat more complex. You have to do the usual uh, method of unfolding it the time and be able to train uh, a network that develops uh, sequentially over, over time. But the input node is always a combination of um, a scene and an instruction. Uh, we have uh, applied this approach and tested it on, a, uh, uh, on scenes that have relatively are computer generated, but are very rich and have people and objects and interactions between people and interaction between objects and, and people and objects and so on. Uh, and let me give you an example of what we can get out of this guided vision. We have a scene, the scene can be relatively complex, and we have a goal in mind, in this case, suppose that we want to know what the woman, woman facing the boy is holding. Have a look and you can probably answer it. And let me show you what it means to uh, analyze this scene in the goal-directed uh, way using the, uh, the approach I just described. The idea is to give the system a sequence of goals, one, of, one after the other, sort of a sequence of instructions in, a, in an automatic way. And by following this, the, um, the, uh, the sequence of local goals or local instructions, this, the system will be guided to uh, meet the goal that you provided to the system. So for example, this was our goal. The goal is given uh, to the scene in the form of a small graph showing the structure of interest in this image. And let me just show you without explaining how it's done, the sequence of operations that the system takes on its own. It finds this lady first and then asks, for example, whether she's facing anyone. The answer is no. So the system automatically generates an instruction to go to the next person. Um, look, well, it's a boy, so it continues. And after a while, it eventually finds a boy facing a woman the woman is, is uh, holding uh, a paper bag and the correct answer is generated automatically 
telling you that the answer to all of this is the paper bag. The analysis of this analysis of the scene is partial. You note that some components which were relevant uh, have been uh, extracted and described. Others are left uh, alone outside of the uh, out of the scheme of the computation. So you get sort of an automatic program applied to the image, following sub goal after sub goal, and eventually quite efficiently finding uh, the uh, the answer to the um, uh, to to the goal that has been provided. And it's not only that uh, it will tell you the literal uh, answer to the question, namely the answer is a paper bag, but it gets the full interpretation of the scheme. It knows. Uh, where is the woman that uh, we are talking about? Where is the paper bag? And so on and so forth. So it gets a rich, full interpretation, which is uh, in, uh, uh, in agreement with the uh, internal goal that was posed to the system. And in this way, it manages to uh, analyze the, the scene without getting into the trouble, the impossible task of analyzing in a bottom-up way up, bottom up way, all the components, all the relations, and all the properties of everything in the scene. And it can, can get quite sophisticated, uh, just to show you another example of the uh, computation in action. Uh, suppose that in this case, we are interested in all the girls in the scene, uh, which happen to be also facing other girls. Uh, so you can see that here it's uh, sort of a high level goal. Uh, that requires some understanding of what we want to take out of the image. We have to understand what it means all that we have to look at one by one and uh, make sure that we do not miss anyone and so on. Uh, this is again translated automatically by an algorithm that I would not describe that takes the goal um, as an input and provides as an output a sequence of instructions to the, uh, uh, to the model that we have seen that can get uh, the image and an instruction as an input. Um, and note also that this sequence of uh, sequential uh, instructions guiding the model cannot be prepared sort of in advance. You cannot first generate the sequence of uh, instruction and then follow them because it's an ongoing involving program. You look for a girl, you find one, then you have to see if it's the right one, it's facing someone. If it's a boy, then you don't look even for facing, you do something else. So it's more like a, a program, visual program applied to the scene uh, sequentially and extracting the goal of interest to the viewer of this uh, scene. And you can see in a schematic example, which follows the automatically generated sequence of operation applied by this guided model, to the scene on the way to extracting the information that we uh, have been asked to provide. Uh, it finds here uh, an example of a girl facing another girl. And as it goes along, it finds a girl that is not facing anyone and it gets the complete answer to the, uh, uh, to the, to the goal that has been posed uh, and has the full structure of what, the, uh, uh, what it extracted. Namely, it knows who is facing whom, where are the relevant girls, where is the failure of a girl not facing anyone and so on. It's part of the automatically generated uh, interpretation. Uh, so let me, uh, time is almost up. So, so let me put this last slide as a sort of visual summary of what uh, I've been talking about. The goal is to be able to look at really complex scenes that we cannot analyze automatically now, but instead of analyzing it completely and comprehensively in the bottom up way, uh, the uh, suggestion is to build a different kind of a model uh, that can uh, accept the image on the one hand, but uh, a, uh, a goal generated internally or externally of what we want out. And then it, uh, it is being able to, uh, to meet the goal and extract the, uh, the information. Uh, as we can see here, we get the image, we get the goal, and you extract the information that uh, we needed or we have been asked uh, to get out. Uh, so let me stop here. And in the few minutes that we have, if there are any questions, I will be glad to, uh, to address them.
Thank you very much. There are, there are uh, some questions and I'll try to gather them up and, and uh, present them to you. The first one or the, the first two are uh, relevant to the to the rules or to the to the goals you uh, decide of. Is it a fixed rule, other fixed rule, or uh, those uh, those goals? How they are the directive goals? How they are fixed rules, or it's uh, something dynamic that could be uh, retrained from the network? Uh, how do you see it? Right. So. To say quickly, the, the goal can be generated if suppose you have a robot or something that has goal and it's looking in the world and so on. It can, they can be generated either internally or externally. What I mean externally is somebody asks the system a question and the question is being translated into a graph structure that we then uh, apply to the model. It can be also generated internally. We watch a movie and we become interested uh, is this person going to, to leave the room, yes or no? And we follow it, generating internally the goals of what we want to take out of the, uh, uh, out of the, uh, out of the scene. But the goals can be very broad. They can be external or internal. Anything you can specify to the system in a formal way by some structure that you're interested in the, in the, in the scene uh, can be the source of the automatically generated sequence of instructions that the uh, uh, model then generates for itself and follow them until it, uh, uh, it meets the goals that uh, has been provided. So in case of uh, you want to actually predict what is going to be the next uh, move, right? let's say if it's a movie, you want to, to predict, but you trained your, uh, your goals model, your goals network from previous uh, scenes. So is it possible to predict that uh, a person is going to do something uh, when everything uh, you know, uh, gathers up in a kind of a relationship uh, graph? Yes, I think yes. An important point to note the, regarding to this question, that note that um, we, do not, we do not have to train the model unlike sort of standard training of uh, deep networks with, um, with pairs of scenes uh, and the interpretation of the scenes. We only train the system on recognizing the building blocks of scene analysis, namely recognizing objects, recognizing relations, but whatever you do for scene understanding, you will need these components because scenes talks about relations and components. So we deal with the atomic uh, uh, building blocks of a scene understanding problem of recognizing the, the properties and the, the relations in the object. And then you don't need to train the system on uh, specific goals. It once it gets any graph as a goal of some structure, here are components and I want to make sure that this person is facing this person or hitting the other person or hiding from the other person. I need this as, as the question, as the query. Uh, and then the automatic uh, um, instruction generating uh, uh, algorithm would just follow or analyze this graph and give you a, an answer without, without ever seen before a similar graph. It just goes automatically from a goal uh, to, um, uh, to a sequence of instructions. And in this way, even if it's something that have never, has never been seen before by the system and so on, as long as it is within the vocabulary of the objects that it knows about and the relations, uh, uh, if, you know, if you use shooting and it doesn't know to, to identify shooting in the in the image, then it will not be able to deal with this particular um, query. But as long as you are within the domain of your ask any question you want, basically, uh, almost within uh, the restrictions of within the vo vocabulary of visually recognizable things that the system has, um, it's very, very flexible. That's some of the examples I've shown that you say, everybody is doing this except for the three little boys or something, whatever you want to do, it will, uh, it will be able to follow it and generate the, uh, um, uh, the required answer. So it's an advantage that it does not go through, you know, millions of scenes and interpretation needs, um, images and the required scene graphs. It will generate uh, these things with just being trained on the basic building blocks.